Okay, number 10. Last question from Ginroth or Ginroth. Not sure how to pronounce. You're a super productive person. If you saw me every day, you probably wouldn't have done. But so the question goes, you're a super productive person. How do you combat procrastination and acrasia? I'm not actually sure what acrasia is. I'm going to assume it's similar to procrastination. Any tips for the common man with the average level of willpower to develop such skills? Is it something you had, or did you employ something like temporal motivation theory? I don't know what temporal motivation theory is either. Uh, but I will tell you that if you were to watch me, I look just as unproductive in any given day as most people. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I drink too much water, so I have an excuse to go to the bathroom. I get up and walk around, and oh boy, I should really get some exercise. I'm going to take two hours off, and so forth and so on, which I suppose is what you might expect from someone who wrote a book called Four Hour Workweek. But the reason that I have a lot of output is because I keep in mind that what you do is more important than how you do something. Just because you get very good at doing something, like organizing rules for your inbox filtering, does not mean or does not make it automatically important and a high yield activity for your time. So even though I may spend let's just say, even on deadline for books, I don't believe it's possible, for me at least, to, to have more than four hours, and that's a total coincidence, uh, more than four hours per day of productive creative output, synthesis work. I can do editing, I can do data gathering, but synthesis work, no more than four hours. And that is actually consistent across all of my friends who are even prolific writers. And they, between 10 p.m. and 10 a.m., that's it. They don't get anything done between the other hours, unless they're a trained journalist. And man, trained journalists, incredible. I don't know how they do it. They just sit down and bang out. I guess because they have no choice, so they don't procrastinate. But man, machines. So that is a long way of saying that I have all the same demons that you do, make all the same mistakes that you do. I just pick my shots and, and identify what I'm not going to do, my not-to-do list, very, very carefully. So even if I twiddle my thumbs and scratch my nose and get an hour of work done, hopefully that 60 minutes has a very high return on investment because I'm picking my activities very carefully. So many people procrastinate because their goals lack balls, quite frankly. Their goals are just uninspiring. They're, they're intended to be realistic and therefore they don't motivate you to plow through or dodge the inevitable hurdles and emotional difficulty and ups and downs that you'll face. And the example that sometimes I give is, you know, the, the trip to whatever, pick a city up, no matter what I pick, I'm going to insult somebody, let's say trip to Cincinnati for the weekend, or a trip to the Greek islands. Right? So the trip to Cincinnati might be more realistic in terms of cost and logistics, attainable perhaps. It's more likely to get put off in many cases because it's simply uninspiring to most people. The Greek islands, all right, you'll, you'll put your head down and just pike through brick walls to get to that, or you'll put up at least with the, the scrapes and bruises along the way. So number one is the magic of thinking big. You really need to up the ante, in most cases, with what you're aiming for, to, 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 to even generate the willpower to do it. And in that case, it's not you that's the problem, it's the goal that you've ended up picking that's the issue. And last but not least, one of the reasons that people procrastinate or don't get much done is because they have anxiety and they have fear of failure. The book to fix that is, you could read the fear setting chapter in the 4-Hour Workweek, which I think synthesizes or condenses a lot of it, but How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, that's the Dale Carnegie book. It's a great, great book. I know a number of people who've conquered severe depression with this. Uh, great book. So I think those are the three books that address the three main causes of procrastination. Number one, having impotent goals. Number two, being disorganized or using your time ineffectively. And then number three, having some anxiety related to failure and therefore postponing action. The last thing I'll say is set your bar. This seems almost the antithesis of the goal recommendation, but it's not. Macro level, you have a big goal. Micro level, on let's say a daily basis, you need a small goal. IBM salespeople killed everyone in the industry for ages. And part of the reason was their quotas were set very, very low which meant they were not intimidated to pick up the phone and make calls because they knew they would almost knew with 100% certainty that they would hit their quotas. This is counterintuitive, but also one of the most successful ghostwriters, uh, I know, he's written 60 books. I mean, how, how the hell do you do that? He is prolific and super consistent, and I asked him how he does it, and he said, two shitty pages. 
That is my quota. Every day, I have to write two shitty pages. That's it. If I write two shitty pages, that day is a win. So you need to set that bar very low or you won't get started. If you then exceed that, let's say two pages, well, then you can end up with a like it or hate it, a book like The 4-Hour Body, which is 570-some pages after cutting 150. Uh, so even for the biggest, you need to have small goals on a micro-daily basis so that you are not inhibited from taking action. All right, that is a long answer, hopefully helpful. And again, thank you to everybody.